and thou art alone are worthy of our worship. Thou art alone are worthy every praise from our hearts, O oh God. You are God and there is none like you. Be lifted, be glorified in all the days of our lives. Forever and ever, God, you reigneth, O oh God, and forever you are worthy to be worshipped. Father, we exalt you. You are highly exalted above everything else. You are highly exalted above all other gods. Highly exalted above all other kings. For you alone are the true God. Father, we worship you. And dear Lord, we want to thank you once again for this great day that you ordained to bless us. That you ordained to lift somebody. That you ordained to do a new thing. That you ordained to perform a miracle. That you ordained to change a situation. Father, we thank you for we know that you've got great plans for our lives today, God. Great plans to our viewers. Great plans to our listeners. Great plans to the people that are around us. Dear Lord, may your name be glorified as you do great things today. In the name of Jesus Christ, Spirit of the living God, this is your work. Do it. And may the name of the Lord be glorified and to take power and authority against every wicked plan of the enemy, against the ministry of the word of God to his people, we decree and declare only the plans of God will prevail and the plans of the enemy will fail in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare the blood of Jesus that speaketh blessing, that speaketh breakthrough, that speaketh great things over each and every one of us. In Jesus' name, we give thanks and believe. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. You can shout a shout of victory. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Before you sit down, we can make our declaration that Jesus Christ is Lord. He knows the nations. He knows the kingdoms. They are lords, but Jesus Christ is the Lord of all. Amen. And he is our Lord. Lifting up your pages, your Bible, of course. Let's go together. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is my Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. You can get seated, please. Greetings once again in the name of Jesus Christ. Please just wave at your neighbor. Because of social distance, I know you, we can only wave. Just wave at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, Pastor Mary greets you. Amen. The Lord is good. And all the time, even right now, he is good. Amen. Together, let's open our Bibles in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter number 41. Genesis 41. I'm waiting for you to open your Bibles. Let's read the Bible. Then it came to pass, verse 1, sorry. Then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream, and behold, he stood by the river. Let's jump to verse 8, 8 to 16. 
Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh saying, I remember my faults this day. When Pharaoh was angry with his servants and put me in custody in the house of the captain of guard, both me and the chief baker, we each had a dream in one night, he and I. Each of us dreamt according to the interpretation of his own dream. Now there was a young Hebrew man with us there, a servant of the captain of the guard. And we told him and he interpreted our dreams for us. To each man he interpreted according to his own dream. And it came to pass just as he interpreted for us. So it happened. He restored me to my office and he hanged him. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph and they brought him quickly out of the dungeon. And he shaved, changed his clothing and came to Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I have had a dream and there is no one who can interpret it. But I have had it said of you that you can understand a dream to interpret it. So Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Again, let's jump to verse 37. So the advice was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. And Pharaoh said to his servants, Can we find such one as this? A man in whom is the Spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne that I will be greater than you. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. And he clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried out before him, bowed the knee. So he set him over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh also said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without your consent, no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zephnaphnir. <laughs> you can pronounce it yourself. Eh? And he gave him as a wife, Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of Horn. So Joseph went out all over the land of Egypt. Amen. Let's open Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 55. We are reading verse 10 and 11. Isaiah 55, verse 10 and 11. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and burn, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word that goes forth from my mouth, these are words of the Lord, it shall not return to me void, says the Lord, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Minister to us in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. The report. Somebody say the report. 
Our today's report from the Lord says, the hour has come. The hour has come. Of course, the hour of God in our lives. You know, God has set time to each and every body. And the set time varies from one person to the other. From one situation to the other. Like, for example, you can have ten ladies conceiving in a single day. But when it comes to the day of delivery, some might even give birth two weeks before their due date, according to the report of the doctor. Some might even give birth a week before. Some, they even go over nine months. And a day comes because the labor pains are only made from God. Not even a doctor can bring the normal labor pains. And so, at that very day that comes to each and every woman, though they conceived the same day, it comes a time, the very hour that that baby will be delivered. Some labor even four days. Some labor two days. Some labor one day. And others labor hours. But it comes the very set time of God for that child to be born. And that is the hour of God in each and everyone's life. Yes, they were conceived the same day, but the hour of being delivered, it is completely different, just according to the plans of God. And so, never be moved of the success of your friend that he has succeeded before you. You have your set time with God. Never be moved because your friend is already driving and you are not yet driving. Your set time with God is coming. Keep on believing in God. Keep on trusting in God. Keep on waiting on God. Though you might be so heavy like the mothers, of course the last month, it is not easy. It is a very tough month. I'm a mother, I've been there four times. And in that last month, you are so tired. You can't sleep well. You can't eat to the fullest. You can't even cry. You can't even laugh. I'm saying what I've experienced. It is such a tough month. But thanks be to God, who has the very hour of everybody. No woman has ever been, been pregnant for 10 years. It is just months and your hour must come. So is the hour of your blessing. So is the hour of your prosperity. So is the hour of your lifting. Praise be to the living God. And you know, like for example, you might have had prophecy and another prophecy. And at times you pray and you hear God saying, yes, the time is at hand. And your expectations are so high because you have had a prophecy. You have heard it from the Lord. Yet in the physical realm, there seems to be like there's nothing that is changing. The time has come, but there is that set time of the hour. Like the children of Israel, when Moses went to them, he told them that God has sent me because he has seen your cry. He has seen your tears, and I have come that you may be delivered. But it was not immediately when Moses came. It took a bit longer than the way they expected. Because when Moses went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's heart was so ardent, he could not release them. And Moses went back again and again. Yes, God had spoken, and the time has come, but the hour was not yet. Because the Bible records that God hardened the heart of Pharaoh. Yet, it was his time to set them free from captivity. And a miracle came and another miracle. After the plagues, in every plague, it was a miracle. It was the doings of the Lord. And so, let me assure you, 
keep on waiting on God. He has said it. He must accomplish it. Hold on. Do not murmur that he has spoken it, yet it is not coming to pass. You know, the children of Israel were like doubting Moses. You said you were sent by God. You have gone to Pharaoh again and again. Yet, the afflictions are still the same. In fact, since you came, it has been more tough. It has been more painful. Moses, did you lie to us? Let me tell you, the preacher did not lie to you. The prophet did not lie to you. The voice that you heard from God, it was true. And the hour is coming. Because when the hour of God came, they were delivered from the land of Egypt. Praise be to the living God. And you know, sometimes you are like, where is it happening to me? You know, the children of Israel, whatever they were going through, it was ordained before time began. Because God spoke to Abraham that your descendants will suffer in the land of Egypt for 400 years. And so until the set time of God had come, regardless of their cry, regardless of their pain, the word of God to Abraham had to be fulfilled. Just hold on. The word of God is coming to fulfillment in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Let's get back to our text. Genesis. And we get to the story of Joseph. This man Joseph began to dream from Genesis chapter number 37. And because of his dream, his brothers hated him the more. And this is where his troubles began. You know, even being hated, it's a trouble by itself. Because everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to be a friend of everybody. Because when somebody hates you, that's a registered enemy. And an enemy always wishes you bad things. An enemy always will have bad thoughts towards you. And so it is not a joke to be hated and not by somebody who is far from you, but people of your own blood, your own brothers that you are sharing the same parents, your own brothers that maybe you are sharing the same house, your own brothers that maybe you share food on the same table. It is not a joke. You are hated by people that are close to you. People that you must fellowship with every day. That itself was a trouble. That made him to get to the next trouble. And the next trouble was being thrown in the pit. And in the pit so many things can happen. In the pit you can be bitten by a snake and die. In the pit, you can be left there to die of hanker. In the pit, it might rain and the pit is filled of water and you end up drowning and dying. In the pit, so many things can happen. And that is where Joseph was. Not because he fell down, but he was thrown by his brothers because of the hatred. The Bible does not record any fracture. But I want to believe that the heart of Joseph was so much wounded to know that I'm, I'm in the pit simply because my brothers of my father have thrown me in the pit. It was painful situation to Joseph. And I want to believe that he was praying that God, it is only you who can deliver me from this. Because it is only the brothers who know that I'm inside this pit. And they are the ones that have thrown me here. And they already hate me. So I'm not expecting anything from them. God, my help comes 
from you. And maybe you've been praying. God, I don't see anyone else around who can help me from this pit. Thanks be to God who hears prayers. Thanks be to God who answers prayers. The prayers of Joseph were heard. And he was lifted from the pit by the same brothers. But little did he know that it was not for good. He was to be sold as a slave. And that was the next trouble. You know, as a slave, you have no freedom. You work, you toil, working hard with no salary. Because you are a slave. No gain. You are just working to make somebody else prosper. And the Bible records that because of Joseph, Potiphar was blessed. His wealth increased because Joseph was there. I want to believe it was so painful to him because if it was in his father's place, he would have known, I'll make my father rich because of the grace of God in my life. And I will inherit because I'm a son of this man. But that was not the case. It was a total loss in his life because he was a slave. That was not yet enough. The next trouble came in. And this is where now God, God was still working in his life. Because the Bible records the favor of God was upon him. All that he did prospered. He was a successful man. Being a slave, he was successful. Being a prisoner, he was still successful. So even in your situation, the Lord is with you. He has promised that I will never leave you, neither forsake you. In the pit, he is with you. Being a slave, he is with you. In the prison, he is with you. Those were the situations of Joseph. You can mention your situations. The situations of your family. Let me assure you, never doubt that God is with you. He's ever present to help you. And so he was thrown into the prison. He had no freedom of anything. In prison, you cannot choose what to eat. You cannot choose what to wear. You cannot choose to go anywhere. You are just content in a one place. And so it was so painful to him because there was nobody to come to visit him. A beloved son of the father, yet a slave. A beloved son. Let me assure you, God loves you so much. He still loves you even in that pain. And so Joseph went through it. But a time came, the hour of God. And that is where now we come to Genesis 41. The hour of God came. After two full years. I want to believe these are the two full years. After the butler was released from the prison. Because Joseph had told the butler, when you go to the king, mention about me to him. Tell him that I'm in prison, but I'm innocent. But the chief butler forgot him. They might have forgotten you, but God still remembers you. And he said, hour is coming. And the hour of Joseph came. After many years, the Bible records that he was 17 years when he began to dream. And immediately after the dream, the troubles began. And the Bible records that it was 30 years when he was lifted by Pharaoh the king. So for 17 years, not 17, 13 years, he was suffering. You have not suffered, my friend. There is a God in heaven who has set time for everybody. Set time for every situation. And so the set time came. And Joseph was called out of the prison. And our point number one says, my hour has come. 
that was the time of Joseph. His hour came and today it is us that the Lord has released this word. And so I want to proclaim it loudly that my hour has come. You can declare it loudly and possess it. My hour has come. My success hour has come. The hour of my prosperity has come. The hour of my lifting has come. The hour of my church has come. Because this is released from the heavens for us to be delivered from different situations. And so Joseph was called out of the prison. And immediately he came out. Let me assure you, when the hour comes, no one can hinder your success. When the hour has come, no one can stand to oppose the plans of God. Because the Bible records that he came out quickly. That nobody, not even Fortifa, was asked, why did you put him in the prison? There was no question what was his case to be put in the prison. The report was, his hour has come and he has to come out quickly. And nobody was to oppose. And everything in the palace stood still to wait for Joseph. Because even the wise men could not interpret the dream. The magicians could not interpret the dream. Because the hour of God for Joseph had come. And God orchestrates things to happen when the hour has come. God caused a dream in the heart of Pharaoh. And in the morning, he was troubled. Because this was not just a dream. It was a dream from God. A dream that was made to lift Joseph from the dungeon. And so God does everything with a purpose. And because the dream came from God, the magicians could not interpret it. It seems like before the king would dream and he would call the wise men and help him. But wisdom comes from God. The wise men had wisdom from God. But God did not allow them to interpret the dream simply because that was the time of Joseph. Because if the dream was interpreted, the chief butler would have continued to forget about Joseph. But the set time of God had come. The hour of Joseph. Yes, he, has, he had gone through pain, but the hour had come. And so, point number two says, be expectant of the Lord's doing, because the hour has come. Be expectant. Don't just be there and sing. She preached about the hours come. Be expectant. Expect from the Lord. He is going to do it. He has declared that my word that cometh forth from my mouth must accomplish what I release it for. He has released this word. So expect a great doing of the Lord in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And therefore Joseph came. And I want to believe that when he was coming out of prison, even the guards were saluting him. You can't joke around with the man who the king is waiting. You must salute him. You must give him way. There was no more hindrance now for Joseph. It was like a highway. The king is waiting for this man. Give way for this man. When your day comes, nothing will stop you. Nothing will hinder you. Nothing will be a block before you. Because the word of God must be fulfilled. And therefore Joseph came out. And of course he shaved. How can you stand before a king with a prison uniform? You still look like a prisoner. Let me tell you, the hour has come. 
She cannot stand to continue doing the things you used to do. She cannot stand to continue looking the way you've been looking. I cannot preach about glorious God when I cannot afford to iron my clothes. I've got to look glorious to glorify God. So you've got to do something. You've got to do your part. You know, God can open a breakthrough for you. But he cannot come down to change your clothes. He cannot come down to wake you up early and to tell you, come on, it is late. Go for your interview. The door is waiting for you. The job is waiting for you. The promotion is waiting for you. The business deal is waiting for you. You've got to do something that you may prosper. Yes, the word is released from heaven. What is your part? Ask yourself, what is my part? Have I shaved? Do I look like it? I can stand before the king? Because, of course, uniform identifies one. And so, how can he come before the king identified as a prison? He had to remove those uniforms. Praise the name of the Lord. So, you've got to do something. Tell your neighbor, you've got to do something. Hallelujah. And after you do something, be connected with the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible records that Pharaoh said, verse 38, and Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find such a one as this, a man in whom is the Spirit of God? So you must be connected with the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit of God knows the mind of God. He knows the will of the Father. He knows the plans of God concerning your life. And therefore, at times, even in that painful situation, we do, do not know what to pray. You don't know what to say. Allow the Spirit of God. The Bible records in Romans chapter 8 that he makes intercession for us according to the will of the Father. Be connected with the Holy Spirit even in your prayer. Be connected with the Holy Spirit even in whatever you want to do that you may be aligned in the will of God. Because Joseph had been praying but in all his life, he was coming from a trouble to another trouble. But when the hour came, that was the set time of his change. There was no more trouble. And indeed, this man was blessed to an extent when he was given a wife. He called his firstborn Manasseh simply because he said, I have forgotten my toil. You can imagine how much now he was blessed. The man who went through painful situations, a slave, a prisoner, but here comes a time when he has forgotten it. Mm. He was lifted. Your lifting is coming. And you shall forget your toil. You shall forget your pain. When the hour has come, and I want to believe it is today, you shall completely forget your toy. Therefore, you can put the last point as, my lifting is at hand. Personalize it and declare, my lifting is at hand. You know, this time, Joseph did not ask for anything. It's time to pray about it was like over. It was his lifting time. And he was lifted only to be second to Pharaoh. You can imagine the lifting. He was lifted above Fortifa, the commander who put him into prison. Your lifting is at hand. And you know he was lifted from prison to palace. If it was today, people might say, this must be maybe it's Illuminati. Oh, Nimajini, 
ameenda kwa muganga ni corruption let me tell you our god is more than able to lift from the dust and make his people sit with the princes and not just princes but the kings because joseph was direct now speaking to the king not anybody between him and the king he was next to the king so when your door opens seize the opportunity do not mind about what they will say he will just tell them the god that i serve is more than able to do much more than what a witch doctor can do is more than able to do what illuminati can do his blessings are greater than the blessings of the devil his blessings opens doors his blessings lifts to higher heights of his glory therefore i want to conclude by saying you've been praying you've been waiting on god you've been crying to god i don't know this word it is for who because we come from different families with different situations you know the situation in your family you know the situation in your business the situation in your workplace you know it all and nothing is hidden before god the god who has released this word he has a set time a set hour with you today therefore just lift up your faith and embrace this rema word and tell god god you have released it with a purpose let this hour be my hour let it be the hour of my blessing let it be the hour of my breakthrough let it be the hour of my prosperity let it be the hour of my healing let it be the hour of my lifting somebody just stand up and just open your mouth and thank god for the word that he has released it and he has a purpose to accomplish it just mention that thing that you feel that situation that you feel it has taken too long just tell the lord the hour has come and here i am to believe I am here to believe that you are more than able to cause a change to orchestrate a situation that will bring a change into my life orchestrate a situation god that will turn around things orchestrate a situation god that will take away shame and bring in double honor Father God in the name of Jesus Christ Here we are Lord Our help comes only from you God It is only you can change this situations God It is only you can turn around things oh God It is only you oh God who can lift from the dust It is only you God who does miracles Oh God we are expectant of the Lord. Today according to your word God, do a new thing in this families God. Do a new thing in this businesses God. Do a new thing in this people's life God. Do a new thing oh God. Your name was glorified in the time of Joseph. Today your name is to be glorified God. As you do great and mighty things oh God you lift from prison to palace God we are ready to be lifted of you God you are more than able to make it up and God cause it to up and God in the name of Jesus Christ we are tired of pain God we are tired of this going round we are tired of stagnation we are tired of imprisonment Father God deliver us in the name of Jesus Christ for whoever the sun sets free it's free indeed in the name of Jesus Christ Father we thank you we bless your name we thank you for we know you have released this word with a purpose and you are going to fulfill 
We thank you for we are ready to declare of your great works. We will declare of your glory. We will declare your doings, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Be lifted, be glorified, God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you and to bless your name. In Jesus' name we give thanks and believe. Amen. Amen. Just bless the Lord with a hand clap. Continue clapping them that are in the houses. Wherever you are, just bless the Lord with a hand clap. Amen. Thank you so much. May the Lord richly bless you. Thank you for choosing to be part of this service. Indeed, I can assure you, I had it from the Lord and he's doing it in Jesus' name. Just believe it and you shall testify of his doings in the name of Jesus Christ. Personally, I'm waiting for God's doing. So much expectant and I will declare his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Giving is an opportunity to receive more. And especially giving an offering. It's connecting yourself with the altar of the Lord. The altar that releases blessings. The altar that opens doors. The altar that causes breakthroughs. So connect yourself with your tithes, with your offerings. And the Lord shall bless you. He shall come back to you great measure and you shall be a blessing to many in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom. Amen.